are here to talk about multiple advances in myeloma. And there's all kinds of things to talk about. Treatment of precursor diseases, maintenance therapy, and the importance of combination therapy. And to do that, I'm with Dr. Sagar Lonial, who is from Emory University, a professor and executive vice chair of the Department of Hematology and Medical Oncology, and uh, Emory University School of Medicine, obviously, chief medical officer. Let's talk about this educational session that you had here. One of the things you reviewed was the rationale for combination therapy. Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, combination therapy is something, again, that in oncology has really what uh, led us to major advances. If you think about old regimens like CHOP, Chopertuximab, MOP, ABVD, these regimens that cured Hodgkin's disease and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma are a consequence of combination therapy. And the question that I posed is, why is that not a standard approach in myeloma? Why do we sort of sequence single agents over time? And the answer is that historically, we tried combinations of chemotherapy and they actually made people sicker and they didn't live any longer. But it's a new day. And with these new drugs, the combinations really are very, very active. So in terms of what people should be trying, what would you recommend? Well, I think, um, you know, there are a couple of questions. In the setting of newly diagnosed myeloma, uh, there has been a trend to use two drugs, with one of them being DEX, so you could argue that's sequential single therapy. And I think at this meeting, we saw a couple of phase three trials that really showed the improvement in not just remission duration, but survival for combination therapy. So I think an IMID and a proteasome inhibitor represent the standard of care for newly diagnosed myeloma at this time. Uh, in the relapse setting, we've seen multiple trials looking at combinations versus, you know, uh, three versus two drugs. And all of them show improvements in progression-free survival. Not all of them show improvements in overall survival. And I think that's where it's not quite as clear. And there's also some brand new agents that really have been, they've been evaluated as monotherapy, so we really don't know what we can do in terms of combo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think daratumumab is probably one of those agents. Uh, daratumumab is an anti-CD38 antibody. But we've seen data at this meeting, actually, combining it with lenalidomide with really high responses and with pomalidomide with also really high responses. So I think that if we use good scientific background for why to combine drugs, we're going to get this sort of synergy when we put things together. Are we going to know which patients for which combination? Yeah, that's, that is probably the work of the next two or three years. <laughs> the last two or three years was about getting access to the drugs, doing the trials to get them approved, and having, letting patients have access to them. But uh, the sort of personalization, if you will, uh, has not been worked out yet. And, and I think it's because myeloma is different from most other cancers. Most other cancers, when they become malignant, they stop doing their day job. Myeloma keeps its day job, and that day job of making antibodies is what helps us to effectively target them using drugs like proteasome inhibitors and antibodies and imids. What about the, the, uh, the potential of early treatment for smoldering yeah. myeloma? Yeah, yeah, Vincent Rajkumar talked about that in our, in our session today. And I think that there's a lot of buzz around this. Can we intervene early and try and prevent all the mutations that we know occur when patients become symptomatic? More importantly, can we prevent end organ damage, which is typically what we use to say treatment versus no treatment. And I, I think the jury is still out. What we did in the last year as the Myeloma Working Group is redefine a set of patients who previously were called smoldering. We called them myeloma. So effectively, we are treating somewhat earlier. But for the people who still fit into that smoldering category, with the, even with the new definition, the standard continues to remain observation or enrollment on a trial. In terms of some of the more expensive drugs that are now coming out of the market, can we afford, in this day and age, and <laughs> with, with uh, healthcare being what it is, can yeah. we afford some of these new agents? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, you got to see what's the sort of value added to bringing them into the mix. And, you know, in myeloma, the, the sort of dominating concept now is induction, consolidation, and continuous maintenance. If you go from more than three drugs up front to four drugs or, say, five drugs, use these antibodies, use all these oral agents, then one of the goals should be not just to get people into remission but to be able to stop therapy. And if you can stop, that will justify the additional cost you have up front for the multi-drug combinations that you're using. So this is kind of the treatment of precursor diseases? Yeah, well, that's in, in MGUS and smoldering, yes, yeah. So in terms of when should it get started and, and with what? So the new myeloma working group definition looks at the traditional CRAB criteria as well as the new uh, myeloma defining events, greater than 60% plasma cells in the marrow, 
free light chain ratio greater than 100 or greater than one lesion by MRI. Outside of that, having either the CRAB or those three myeloma-defining events, we wouldn't recommend standard treatment even for precursor diseases. So in terms of what else was being presented at the, uh, the educational session that you'd like to bring up? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, Professor Facon did a really interesting job talking about the reason and made the case for consolidation and maintenance therapy. Um, and right now, maintenance has, uh, for the most part, been limited to looking at lenalidomide or thalidomide because they're oral agents and it's easier for patients. There was one trial with bortezomib, but as we know, bortezomib can be tough to give in the maintenance setting. With the approval recently of exasimib, an oral proteasome inhibitor, I think this opens the game to asking the question you asked, how do you pick who gets what, and uh, perhaps having more than just one drug in the maintenance setting. So in the short term, what do you think is coming down the pipeline that might make a difference? Well, I think, um, I, I think our job for the next year is to figure out how to use these four drugs we've got approved in the last 12 months. And where, does, where do drugs like panabinostat, exasimib, daratumumab, and elotuzumab fit in the current treatment landscape? I think they're all active, they all are, are good drugs, but when to use them is, is certainly the big question. I mean, it's gotta be a struggle for the guidelines people to try and figure out what's what at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, many people are gonna come up with their own, this is how we do it, but it's all gonna be empiric. There's no true evidence that tells you to go one way or the other. How long will it take to get that? Um, I suspect we'll probably be looking at that in a couple of years. So probably not by ASH next year, but... I don't think so. And I mean, there are proposals to do trials that are looking at four drug up front, including an antibody, um, and then consolidation, and then limited duration maintenance. That, I think, is where we'd like to be able to get. Well, I think it's a fascinating topic, and I thank you very much for your time. Multiple advances in myeloma. And for all of uh, the variety of pieces that we're doing here at ASH 2015, please look around online and in print. I'm Rick McGuire.